Okay, so now we are on to um, item B, seclusion and restraint data. That was um, Mr. Wildeboer, Mr. Ms. Walker, Ms. Justice. So that is normally a Julie. Is Ju oh, Julie's joining us? Okay. She's here. Hello, Ms. Varnum. Hi, can you hear me okay? We can. Okay, good, good. Um, <clears throat> the attached data represents the counts of seclusion and restraint for the school years 18, 19 to present. The data is provided by school year, cumulative by school, and then aggregated demographically from district totals. So you'll see you have the school counts and then at the bottom where it says system data in the bottom right corner, you have the, um, the aggregate demographically. Um, and this is done in order to protect student identity. Uh, student Support Administration is continuing to invest in evidence-based practices to continue reducing incidents resulting in seclusion and restraint. Okay, does anybody have any um, comments or questions from Ms. for Ms. Barnum? Uh, yes. Not, not, a, not a question. I thank you very much for compiling this data, um, but I just want everybody to know because I know there's a lot of curiosity around it, a lot of interest in the issue. It is available uh, publicly on our website. You can click on the agenda and you can find it there. But thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate it, Ms. Farnham. Ms. Justice? Okay, uh, yes, thank you very much for this. It's, um, I mean, we, we got the broken down data, which was pretty straight numbers, a lot more clarified instead of going through the whole uh, documents that you sent us. Uh, and I am pleased to see that, it, you know, over the last four years that the seclusion in the state have gone down, although the numbers are still concerning considering the process of, of reporting. I mean, if, it doesn't, I believe it has to be 10 minutes uh, for seclusion for a child to be reported. That is a requirement that you have to report if you have um, 10 minutes or more. However, New Hanover County Schools reports all incidents. Okay, so that's so everything we're looking at right now. Let's say the most recent 21-22, the seclusion only 148. That's uh, that's all incidents that have occurred in the district. Yes, yes. Okay. We do not um, in our training and um, in our practices and protocol. We do not stipulate a time frame. We have staff report each incident. So if a child's been uh, in seclusion for say two minutes, it's reported, or 30 seconds, or or. 30 minutes, okay? Yes, all are reported the same. Okay, well, I appreciate, I'm glad to hear that. All right, um, and restraint order only, that's also gone down. Uh, are all these people that are doing these restraints, the, uh, the, the our staff, are they all uh, trained in the process properly and certified? Um, Yes, any staff that engage in this are only supposed to do so as they are trained. Now, in emergency situations, that might be different, but um, those are few and far between. The majority of these are um, with students that have consistent and um, pervasive needs, and so they are trained staff. Well, thank you for the numbers so we can actually look at it. I really appreciate that. And I said I am pleased to see it's gone down, although to me it's – no, and it's still a concern. Thank you. Ms. Walker. Hi, Julie. Thank you so much for, for putting the data in, in a way that we can see it that's obviously not identifiable. Um, I guess uh, I've, I've been very appreciative of the work you're doing to, you know, to discuss it, especially out with everyone here at the meetings and in the pub, with the public. Um, and I'd love to hear, I don't know what the next steps are, but I would love to hear your thoughts on maybe the, the plan going forward whenever you're ready for that and kind of what a timeline is that you feel is best for you to, to work on that. So um, I, I don't know, there's nothing on the agenda, I don't think for next time, but um, I know you're, you're always thinking about it. So whenever you get the opportunity to let us know, you know what a plan would be, we would appreciate it. Thank you. Um, Mr. Thank Wilder, you, I will. First, uh, I, I would like to echo what everyone else and, and appreciate uh, you putting this all together for us and stuff. And uh, just to echo what uh, Ms. Walker just said, I, you know, I would love to hear next steps because I think uh, I know you for, for a fact and myself um, and everyone on the board, I believe, feels the same way. We'd love to see, you know, these numbers, even though they are going the right way, which is great. 
uh, going down, we'd love to see them be zero zero uh, <laughs> if at all possible. So, um, you know, next steps we can do to, to help get these numbers even lower would be wonderful. So, one of the things I do want to jump in and, and say is that if you will uh, bring your attention to page one at the bottom, you'll see system wide data. Um, it's broken down through uh, subgroup, and you'll also see IEP. So, there's 680 kids that have IEPs that have been the occasions have been put in there. At any given point, if the board wants to discontinue this, it's need to vote a four. We're ready to vote if that's what you want. Uh, could you speak up? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear what you just said the last two sentences. I said we have, if I was bringing your attention to where the information was on the data, mm -hmm. there's system-wide data, 899 are seclusion, um, restraint only is 333, this is on the first page, okay. 110. For both, that was for 2018-19. Um, mm -hmm. If you mm -hmm. go to the next one, you'll see 1920. You'll see the, the data there. Mm -hmm. You go down to the next page at the very far on the right, you'll see that. If you go down as of today, you'll see that. Mm -hmm. And what I was stating is that any given time, if the board wants to stop seclusion uh, restraints, um, you can vote. Um, I don't want to put this in Julie's hands. That's not her job. Um, we, our job is to ensure that we are following protocol. So it's the board's will. All we need is a vote. Okay. I, I was justice. I would like to next practice. I mean, uh, it's not Julie's providing us with information. I would like to hear per information for our alternatives, which is what I thought we were on the process of doing, so that this isn't necessary. Uh, the whole idea is for us to have knowledge in order to make good decisions and just to say suddenly let's vote well I'm not saying you're saying that but let's I mean I thought that was a discussion we had just had that I we know that we can vote to stop it but we I thought since the beginning we needed to understand what's the alternative and isn't that what you're planning on bringing I'll answer for Mrs. Varnum we have all year been working with teachers I think years prior before, they've been working with teachers and staff, those who are trained. Um, at first, it's um, applied behavioral ABS. That was one of the um, uh, techniques that we've used. I think before, they probably used PIC training. Um, it's always to de-escalate before you get to this. Um, this is always, or should be, the last um, intervention that's used. Um, so when we talk about what are other things, what I'm seeing is that the individuals who are in these buildings every single day, this is last resort. So I don't know what else we can bring to you to tell you other than we stop with the seclusion and restraint and then it's done. But every single day, individuals go in and they use their expert knowledge and I don't know what else to bring to the board to tell you or to justify the other trainings that are needed other than to say if we just, the other option is to stop doing it. Um, there's no other option because there is a systematic approach that you use as an educator and you have to be trained to do it. Mm -hmm. So if you're not doing that, then the other option is don't do it at all. And you have the um, right to say we're not going to do it at all. Could I ask? Okay, the, um, our time is just about up and we do, I'm, I'm gonna let a couple more comments and then we do have our four o'clock um, stop for um, closed session. So um, do we have a hand up over here? Yeah. Madam Chair, I just really briefly wanted to say, you know, 899 uh, people last year, I've, I have received uh, comments from parents uh, about what they felt was inappropriate um, restraint over the last year and that was, or, or seclusion that was three and my my suggestion as mr. McMahon has said you know uh, which is what he recommends if you have a question the best place to start is with that teacher and that principal because there are going to be times in any system where something is not used properly and we can deal with that if that's the concern but uh, you know, again, I, I don't think this is something that we're trying to do, and uh, I appreciate all of our staff who work to make sure that our kids are being treated properly and taken care of. Ms. Justice. 
Uh, I actually, I think both Ms. Walker and then Mr. Uh, he, yes, McMahon has had their hands up. We're trying to do our jobs. Yeah. Trying to discussion. give them an opportunity to discuss too, not just me. Well, yours is the hand that I saw go up. Mr. McManus. I'm so confused. We did away with the suspensions under eight, and I think we did it for the right reasons. Uh, and, and I do hear from a lot of teachers like everybody else, unsolicited, and, and that's okay, because I don't care. But we did leave an option at the principal's discretion for suspension where it was just it had to be, and that's the principal's ability to control certain situations. And this is absolutely amazing. I mean, what a wonderful job. And I know that <coughs> the teachers and the staff and the administration and, and, and Dr. Warren have done a great deal about this. But I, right this moment, I, I just hate to cut it off totally without right. the principals having a right in certain situations because there's safety concerns for both the student and staff at times i just i hate it's all or nothing because that 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 pretty well leaves everybody out yeah. so at this moment if we want to do away with it that somebody but i think we still have to leave a little bit of room for the principal as, as deemed necessary by the, the school administration and staff okay miss walker I feel like the conversation is going in a great direction. I feel like we're getting the data. I think that's that's where we should start with everything. And I think that they're, they're expressed to us at the last um, meeting that Julie presented was that we could move towards eliminating. But to vote now on something like that, I agree. I just don't think it's the right thing to well, do. Well, it's an information item, so we're really not right. supposed to vote. Okay, good. <laughs> we're supposed you. to be getting information, right. soaking it all in. Yes. Yeah. And Done. Oh, I, Are you done? I, I think he's got his hands a little over here. Judy, let's just go. Okay, well, uh, so uh, just what are the conversation in total? So uh, Ms. Varnum will be coming back then the next meeting if we request to have further information on how we can possibly transition into uh, next to zero uh, situations, uh, bringing the professionals in mind because there are other ways and trainings things can be gone. I'm, so I'm assuming we're going to be talking about it further then. It, we'll assume if someone gives me an, uh, an item. Mr. Okay. Wilderboer. And I'll finish very quickly. Um, and, and I'm sorry, I, I wrote it down on another pad, but I don't remember the gentleman's name. We've, a lot of us have heard from him. I think maybe it, it, we're all, as an educator, um, I've, we did restraints at times and stuff, and never, never something I ever wanted to go into school and say, hey, I want to restrain the child no. today. So, um, <laughs> you know, there, there are some new programs out that I would love to hear, maybe as a whole board, and maybe we can look towards trying something new that, that has been successful in other uh, states and other counties. And uh, what's his name? Guy Stevens. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we have reached the end of our time okay. there. If um, someone wants to you know, put that on our agenda for next time, then send me an email. Um, and then the person who wants to second it also needs to send me an email, not just I have a second. And then we need to really formulate what we want to hear so that we're not just there they are Ms. Barnum and her staff are not just grasping at straws on what they think we want to hear. 